Yo people, welcome back to our channel. Read the Forbes. Today, you already know what we're going to be talking about. That's why you clicked on this video. Yes. Three things they didn't tell you about marriage. They didn't tell you. They did not warn you. Listen, let's go straight to the video. First thing. Your marriage is just you and your spouse. It's not your Auntie Ruth, your Uncle Malcolm, your cousin Patricia, and your best friend Lucy. Marriage. The constitution of marriage is between husband, wife, and God. Yeah? Husband, wife, and God. As my lovely wife said, it's not it's not our friends and our family don't need to be consulted about the arguments. Yeah. The disagreements. Every last thing that happens in your relationship mm -hmm. they don't do you know what happens when it happens drama a lot of drama i mean in our first year of marriage i definitely didn't understand the concept i mean the first five years i didn't understand the concept if i'm being totally honest never understood the concept i was told i was told like when we had counseling from our pastor so i kind of told everyone that it was like the biggest mistake of my life and everything that he used to do to me what? That You're wasn't that like... serious. No, you didn't really do anything bad. But I mean, like, all my aggravations and stuff, I would spew it out on people and then they probably found it hard to forgive you because they love me so much. I would never speak ill of my wife no. to a friend or no. family. I've never, to be fair, I've never spoken ill of you. Yes, you have. I've never. He's a liar. Oh my gosh, yes, you have. Did I have my integrity? You have. I've you never have. spoken you have. ill of you. You have. I've never. You have. You have. I've never spoken ill of you. So when we was going to get a divorce, you didn't speak ill of me once during no. the situation no. like when you locked me in the house and stuff. <laughs> Who locked you in the house? He did. No, I didn't. Yes, I, left, he did. I left the door open he did. and I walked out and of the And he took the key. There was only one key. Got a spare. <laughs> <laughs> so you never spoke ill of me? Never. Oh, whatever, man. Anyway, Listen, continue. Speaking ill of your spouse. It's never a good look. Do you know why? Because you're going to have to forgive them. Especially if you're a Christian. We are in the business of forgiveness. Mm -hmm. So, one, you said, I do. Till death do us part. And you did. Sickness and in health. Yeah. Richer, Richer or poorer. poorer. And the rest goes on. <laughs> but it means you're going to be with that person forever. So why speak ill of that person that you say that you're going to spend the rest of your life with? But I, I think I can answer that question because oh, yeah. I spoke really ill of you. Oh, thank I did, you. and you know, you know I did. I did, I did, I really did. And I did, like I said, for the first five years, I probably spoke a bit too much. No, I did speak too much. Chatty patty. I was, I was. Mm -hmm. I put my hands up to it, I was. No, but I can, I can admit, I can admit, I don't talk no more, you know that. <laughs> At the end of the day, I feel like, even though I did say my vows, I was, I still needed to speak to someone. I'm one of those people that needs to get things off their chest. But that isn't the right way. So even after saying my vows, I was still talking about you because you upset me more than once. And I remember I would go to family members. I called my uncle. I was like, Uncle Denny, I am coming to Huddersfield because I've had enough um, and stuff like that. So, you know, I did do that. And I think what, what makes it difficult is when you run, not run, not run around, when you, if you, you, how do I say this? If you are telling everybody about your business, like Adrian said, you're gonna have to forgive them, right? You're gonna come back together. That family member or friend is not gonna be able to forgive your spouse in the way that you will forgive your spouse. I think things should always be kept in your marriage. If you, you need to have a select few people that you can trust that you can talk to, right? I, I think that, I do think that, that people that will build up your marriage, not be like, oh girl, you need to leave him. I have my girls, I would speak to them um, and I can trust that it won't go beyond them. Um, and I, the same is with you, right? You have your yeah. boys, like if you're gonna speak, you're gonna speak to them. I know, you, you know, you have those people that you can speak to. So you should definitely have your select, your select people that you can trust and also that you can trust that they'll uplift you. Do you get what I mean? When we was on, this, on the road of getting a divorce, my friends were like, 
girl please you're not leaving him and I was like yes I am leaving him no but Tara bloody bloody blah no I'm telling you so I was literally having an argument with them when I was mentioning it do you get what I mean because they wanted the best for us it's when praying friends are your best friends yeah and um prayer changes things when when things seem dark when things seem down prayer is what handles those things that we can't actually deal with those physical things where we can't get to uh let's say if there is anger animosity between a spouse prayer is something spiritual it's something only god can deal with mm. so you need to go before god and say god i need your help there's nothing else i can do you've got to do it now yeah Listen, also though this is a this is a, a a major mistake i don't think a married person can speak to someone who's single and doesn't know what marriage is like right you can't be asking a single person about marriage advice yeah it doesn't work it's the same way as if someone has a child and they're looking for parental advice then goes to someone that doesn't have a child for advice that just doesn't make any sense and it's not anything against them but it just doesn't make sense because if you if you don't protect your marriage right then you're going to be hearing it from this person this person this person this person this person then you're going to come home and want a war with your spouse if you keep god in the center of your marriage you're going to have a fruitful marriage you're going to have a marriage that's meant to fulfill everything and every expectation um you're going to see your marriage have an impact a powerful impact in people's lives next topic sex, sex. You're a kid. <laughs> You're a kid. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know about a lot of other people, but I know that people are like, oh, I'm gonna get married, oh, I can have sex. Yeah, you can. And I mean, you might be doing it. Oh God, this is so awkward. Yeah. You might, you might um, partake in that because it's righteous, okay? You're partaking in that. But guess what? Life happens. You cannot, it's, it's not, you speak, I give up. Before I got married, I'm sure like every guy is thinking, sex, 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 sex. But you get married and yeah, you can have sex whenever you want now. Yeah. With this woman that you marry whenever and however you want. Um, but then you have to understand that responsibilities, life... Life happens. Life after the happens. sex, it's responsibilities and you work. You gotta pay for rent. Uh, pay council tax. Extracurricular activities. Do overtime. Both of you could be working two different shifts, tired. You could be doing 12 hour shifts each. Listen, it doesn't, it's, it doesn't happen all day, every day, like us guys think it will. Cleaning the house. Sometimes want it, Sometimes people want it all day, every day, for the rest of their life. Cooking dinner. You get tired. Tired. The woman gets tired. The woman gets tired. But, um... The guy gets tired. Like, I think there's this whole misconception that, oh, I'm gonna get married, we're gonna have sex every single second, every single minute. I'm gonna go to her job and be like, babe, on your lunch break, come home. Come home on your lunch break, babe. Don't take a lunch break, just finish work a little bit earlier. Come home. Oh my gosh, we're on the drive home. Let's do something. <laughs> like, come on, like. But, not to say, these things do happen. They do. Don't get married just for sex. That's basically the moral of the story. Don't get married just for sex. Because life happens. Next topic financial stability. It's important because you don't want to put your spouse in a situation like I put Adrian in. Adrian didn't have any credit. Not because he had bad credit, he just didn't have any credit because... I didn't take out any... Loans or credit stuff. cards or catalogs. <clears throat> Me, as soon as I turned 18, I took everything out I could get. And then to be fair, I didn't really think about the debt that I had. And then when we got married, uh, he got tied to my debt. So basically, we are connected in a credit score way. And um, it's not been easy. Yeah, so what she failed to say is that after taking out the credit cards and the loans she just failed to pay them either on time or I didn't, at all but i didn't get taught that i didn't get taught it's, that you have true. to okay but we're talking about marriage yeah financial stability i believe will it's be so, important. so detrimental if you do if you if your financial st if your finances 
are stable before you enter into a relationship, you're going to be a whole lot better. Yeah. Because once you can control the way you spend, the way you save, and how you earn the money that you do, and how you you, you control your finances, it takes a lot of stress off. It does take stress off the relationship. I think if you look at if you hear it, you can even research it. A lot of marriages break down due to finances, due to debt, due to the stress of it. We all know money makes the world go round, right? In order to eat, you need to have money. In order to get clothes, you need to have money. In order to clean yourself and wash yourself, you need to have money to pay your hot heating bill and stuff like that. So it causes so much stress. So the fact that you guys can come together and have your finances in order, it really helps. Like, I'm still trying to figure out my debt. We've been married seven years. Do you get what I'm saying? Like, this ain't easy. Like, I can't go and have the luxury. Say for instance, today we want to buy a house. I'm not going to get a mortgage. And if I do get a mortgage, it's going to be high interest rates. Do you get what I mean? It's little things that make a life a little bit easier. What we're giving you is tips on how to go into your marriage. Mm -hmm. We wouldn't want you to look at this video and say, oh, well, we haven't got anything, so our marriage is gonna fail. No, we're not saying that. No. We're gonna we're saying that if you do these three things, or if you're careful of these three things, you're in a better starting position. Yeah, you're giving yourself a better starting position. Yeah.